You've got to tune in 90.3 FM KEXP here in Seattle and streaming all over the world at KEXP.org. My name is Morgan. Very glad to be down in the live room with the band Cigarettes After Sex, one of my favorite albums of the year so far. Very glad to have them in studio. Welcome. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having us. Love to hear a couple songs from you. Sure. Take it away.
Cigarettes After Sex live on KEXP. The song's called Sunsets. Cigarettes After Sex live on KEXP. The new self-titled album came out this past June and playing tonight at the Crocodile, tomorrow at the Doug Fur. Both sold out shows. That's awesome. Yeah. And great. yeah, uh, you started this project back in, or Cigarettes After Sex back in 2008 and the first EPI came out in 2012. And so there's five years until the, the full length album came right. out. Can you talk about what was happening in the meantime and how, what the process of putting this full length album out was? Sure, what happened was uh, the EP in 2012 was almost kind of an accident. It was something we just kind of tried one night in a stairway in the university that Philip and I went to back in El Paso. And it came out really good. And then after that, everything that we did after just didn't seem good enough. And so we're kind of just putting things on the shelf and trying things out that didn't go anywhere. And then uh, Philip and I moved to New York, and uh, we met Jake, we met Randy, and the band kind of reformed, and that took a while as well, just kind of relocating and those kind of things. Uh, we also tried another record at that point. It didn't work. Uh, we scrapped it, and then finally we did a song called Affection, and everything just kind of gelled together. We used that as a template for the LP. So it was a lot of just kind of... Um, 
the, that EP was so good that we couldn't really equal it. It just took a, took a while to kind of find our way after that. Well, I'm glad you took a while to, yes. to make a perfect record because it's so good. And I feel no, like um, this record is so unique in that it's very simplistic in the song structure and the, the beats and everything like that. But it's, it's so unique because it's so cohesive in that every song uh, has a similar vibe but fits really well as an album together. And yet the songs can stand alone as singles. Is that something that you were going for when you were making this album? Yeah, exactly. I, honestly, I just found like the records I liked the most were the ones that just kind of gave you one sound and went really deep into it. And I wasn't really interested in these kind of eclectic records that, all right, let's do this, let's do that, and kind of moved all over the place. I just wanted to go into one mood and go really deep into that mood. And I thought that was the most powerful kind of thing we could do. And the most powerful thing that I was hearing in music, you hear like a record like kind of blue or something like that. And it's just one mood for the whole time and there's nothing really like it. Mm -hmm. So I thought, let's just kind of do something like that and that'll be the strongest thing. What are your musical influences? Who do you love the most? Who do you listen to the most? Um, it's strange. Almost like, sometimes, like the biggest influences are the ones you don't really listen to that much because they kind of made such an impact. You kind of have it, like you kind of go to it at a certain time. But the biggest ones for me were Francoise Hardy. Um, her record La Question was like a huge influence on the sound of cigarettes. Just like that kind of going back to case of records, like just a, a great record throughout that kept this one kind of vibe that nothing else sounds like. And then we used, um, you know, Mazzy Star was a big thing um, that we kind of took some ideas from Red House Painters, Cocteau Twins. But even the music of, like, Eric Satie was a big influence on how minimal it is. Or, like, early group, uh, girl groups like the Paris Sisters, I think we took a lot from as well. So it's kind of all over the place. Yeah, that's really cool. And uh, I feel like the lyrics in the record are very unique and cohesive in that way as well. Mm. And they strike me as almost cinematic because, uh, yeah. obviously, the overarching theme of the voc of the uh, lyrics is love. It's a right. sort of an album about uh, love and time, periods of time and love. Um, but there also feels like repetition in ideas. Mm -hmm. And like uh, you mentioned, helicopters crashing a couple of different times, and it feels very cinematic. And like um, there are places in each song, but also you're like remembering, and it's voyeuristic in a way. Is that something you were thinking about when you were writing the lyrics? Yeah, I thought, like, there's a record like Nebraska by Springsteen where, like, he kind of repeats, like, the same kind of words a lot. And I thought it, like, made the record sound, like, really, like, as one piece. And so I thought, you know, as a writer, you kind of get hooked on certain words. And uh, I think some writers will be like, oh, I don't want to reuse that word, you know, again or something. But I thought, no, that's what's cool about it. Like, you kind of put these words together. And it creates this kind of worldview or, like, this kind of vision um, that the record kind of takes on. You get these kind of repeating... Um, um, objects and like repeating things like that. And so that was uh, something that was really in mind for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you a big fan of film and TV? Do you, do you watch a lot of stuff? Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. And film was like a big influence on just the whole style of the group, just taking like, you know, like a, a film that has a certain mood to it. A lot of like, I guess, European art cinema mm -hmm. um, had the kind of moods that are, um, and even like dialogue and stuff that you would find like in a, in a film like uh, Jules and Jim or something, or Dub Life of Veronique, or these kind of like... Uh, philosophical uh, European art house films that kind of have this kind of language to them. That was taken a lot for this band and, uh, and kind of used uh, using the film kind of uh, idea and, and trying to make a musical version of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, were you making music before Cigarettes After Sex? How did, when did you start playing music? I've been playing since I was like 10 years old. I um, just started playing guitar and immediately started writing. And so Cigarettes was probably like my 100th band or something like that that I kind of started. I had like so many... You know, you kind of name, like, any style. And I probably went through it at some point. Yeah. Um, so this was just, like, another band. It wasn't like, oh, here's my band now, finally, after all these years. which is like, oh, here's another band. Let's see what it does. And this one just stuck, mm -hmm. you know, after all those years. In the last nine years that you've sort of been putting out little bits and pieces of music, it's sort of been blowing up on the Internet. And even before uh, this full-length album out, a song from the EPI, Nothing's Gonna Hurt You, Baby, was featured on A Hand Handmaid's Tale mm -hmm. Uh has anything changed since the album came out, or do you feel a momentum building with Cigarettes After Sex? Yeah, it really, it was like everything went viral on YouTube um, in October of 2015, and Affection and Nothing's Gonna Hurt You both took off. And pretty much from that lightning bolt, um, everything that's happening now is happening. But it was really that. I think it was mostly that YouTube thing that really did it. Um, the Handmaid's Tale, you know, it's great to be associated with, with a, a, a show like that, and it's a great show. Mm -hmm. But um, that first momentum was really what kind of led to here. And uh, the record was just like, let's just keep it going and keep building. And it has been moving. You know, it's moving and everything's growing. And this U.S. tour is, like, you know, much bigger than we would have done last year. And European tours are getting great. Asian tours are 
getting great. We're kind of going all over the world. Um, so it's just building and building. It's great. Cool. Mm -hmm. And you even did a cover of REO Speedwagon's right. Keep on Loving You. I can't imagine another band that would actually nail that song and mm -hmm. somehow make it better. Why, why did you choose that song to cover? It was genuine. It was a genuine love for the song. I grew up listening to that song. Um, it was the kind of song you hear like in a supermarket and it kind of just, it was like white noise to me growing up and I didn't really care for it. And then one day, I'm not sure if you have this experience like where a song you kind of always knew finally just kind of knocks you out out of nowhere. And it happened with R.E.S.P. Speed Dragons, uh, Keep On Loving You. I just started to love that song, put it on repeat all the time when I was in New York. And so I thought, and then um, what I thought was if you slowed it down, when I started playing on guitar, it became a really sad song. It was actually kind of a desperate song underneath it. And so we just thought, let's just kind of try a version like that and see what happens. And we just did it in one take. It we worked perfectly. Nice. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and you're obviously a, a fan of the arts. Um, I like to ask this question to people who I feel like mm -hmm. uh, might think about this sort of thing. Why do you think music matters? What's important about it? Um, you know, music, you know, it makes life worth living, basically. Like, it's, it kind of gives you uh, these good feelings, and it uh, helps you cope with the bad feelings. You know, so I think that's why it's important. And if it wasn't for music, I'd, I might not be here, but, you know, going through some really rough times. So in that sense, you know, it, it definitely can save people's lives too. Mm -hmm. Save mine <laughs> at some point. Well, I'm glad you're making music. I'd love to hear a couple more songs from you. Sure. Cool. Uh, this is called Sweet for a new record. Watch in the video that you sent me. One where you're showering with wet and dripping You know that I'm obsessed with your body But it's the way you smile that does it for So
Cigarettes After Sex live on KEXP. They got one more for us.
Cigarettes After Sex live on KEXP. I think we have time for, what, nine more? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> we can do it. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here today. It was a real treat to see you live. And uh, have a great rest of your tour. Sure, thanks so much. It's our pleasure. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, pick up the new self-titled album, Cigarettes After Sex, out now. Highly recommend it. You will not be disappointed. And if they are coming to your city, definitely catch them on tour, playing tonight at Crocodile and Doug Fur tomorrow in Portland. Keep it tuned right here to the station where the music matters. 90.3 FM, KEXP, Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.